Welcome to another edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. We started a series yesterday looking at the names and attributes of God. And we reflected on how some people misuse uh, the name of God and how it's contrary to what is written in the Ten Commandments. Some people don't believe that saying such things has any consequence. Or in Hebrews 12, verse 29, it says, Our God is a consuming fire. And yesterday we looked at the term, Hallowed be your name. Hallowed is a thing that is made holy, set apart to be exalted or worthy of absolute devotion. Elsewhere in scripture, it says that uh, no one can see God and live. Yet Moses met God face to face, and it said that he was trembling with fear because of the majesty and power and holiness of God. And when he came down from the mountain, because he'd been in the presence of God, his face glowed and the people couldn't look on it, so he had to put a veil over his face. And because we know that God is all-seeing, all-knowing, in all things and everywhere, God is not mocked, as was shown in the story in Acts chapter 5, just after the Holy Spirit had come on uh, the believers uh, as they prayed and were meeting together. The believers decided to share their possessions to look after each other. And Ananias and Sapphira sold some land and came one by one to the feet of the apostles to offer the proceeds. Fair enough. But Ananias lied. And not to the apostles, but to the Lord. Now, he could have given as much or as little of that money as he wanted, but he decided to lie. And he dropped down and died. Then his wife came in, Sapphira, and the apostles asked, well, how much? did the land cost and, uh, and what were you prepared to give? And she told exactly the same lie as Ananias. And as they were burying her husband, she dropped down and she died. We believe in a supernatural all power, all seeing, all knowing God. So why is it that we treat his name and his worship and his praise with such insignificance. When Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments, it says that the Lord was thunder and lightning and fire on the top of Mount Sinai. He revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush that didn't burn and consume. Uh, the tree. So we must gain a new understanding and perspective of the God that we worship and believe in. Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, who is at the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. Jesus is the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and there was not anything made that wasn't made without God. God said, and it was created. And then the Spirit of the living God, the Ruach HaKodesh, moved upon the face of the waters. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all present, all working together as one to create. Which brings me on to the names of God. We've looked at El Shaddai, 
the Lord God Almighty, the All-Sufficient One. We looked at the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh, Jehovah. And now, today we're going to look at a few others. Another one is Elohim. Elohim is, he is your creator. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. It wasn't just a magic trick. Every aspect of creation was designed with meticulous detail. When we look at a butterfly and the designs and the variety and the intricacies of it, we look at the human body and how everything should work in perfect harmony. When we look at all the animals and the birds and the trees and the mountains and the rivers and the beauty of creation. When we realize that every single human being is different. The intricacy of DNA. The self-healing properties of the body. That every snowflake is different. It's incredible. And we see this reflected in Genesis 1.27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And when God created Adam out of the soil, he breathed in him the Ruach HaKodesh, his very breath, and gave him life. So that life in us is the very breath of God. An element of our DNA is from God. Hence why we have this God-shaped hole in our hearts, why lots of people are searching. Some people are searching after light, some people, unfortunately, Search after dark. And if God created us in his image with potential, do we feel worthless, unlovable? But if God took such time and detail to create us, and loved us so much that he sent Jesus. Why do we feel worthless and unlovable? Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I will give thanks to you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Another name of God is Elohim Chaim. Chayim, C-H-A-Y-I-M. He is the living God. Joshua 3 verse 10 says, Today you will know that the living God is amongst you. Elohim Chayim. It's like when you uh, toast somebody in Jewish circles, you proclaim Lachaim to life and here we say see in joshua the living god and 1 corinthians 15 verse 3 following christ died for our sins just as scripture says he was buried he was raised from the dead on the third day he was seen by peter and then by the 12 and after that he was seen by more than 500 followers at one time most of whom are still alive and witnesses though some have died then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. So even in the New Testament, it reinforces Elohim Chaim because Jesus is alive. The 
when you look around the world, the difference between our faith and others is that all the other founders or leaders or prophets or whatever they call them are dead. But Jesus is alive. And the evidence is the transformed lives of his followers. You know, it's nearly 2,000 years ago since Jesus died and rose again. There are other faiths who say that they are preeminent and they're about 15 or 1600 years old and came about from another root. Another name of God, which we have heard before, and just a quick recap is Abba, or he is your father. Often called daddy, papa, papi, a very intimate relational name. Romans 8, 15, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful as slaves. Instead, you receive God's Holy Spirit when you were adopted as his own children. And now we can call him Abba, Father. And although God is a consuming fire, he's revealed himself to be holy, hallowed and worthy of praise. Jesus has opened the way for us to restore and have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Which is incredible. Considering the power and majesty that was needed to create everything and us. That God would reach out in such a way. He could have flicked his hands and you'd be a robot and you would have loved him because he clicked his fingers. But he gave us free will to choose. So choose life today. Choose to have a different view of who your God is. Reflect on these names. El Shaddai. Yahweh, Elohim, Elohim Chaim, Abba, Jesus. For God so loved the world, John 3.16, that he sent his only begotten son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the bit that's often missed is, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You're valuable. You're precious to him. He created you and knit you together in your mother's womb and knew you before you were even born. He designed you and breathed his breath of life in you to praise his name and give him all the honor he deserves. Amen. And as we pray today, we pray that the Lord will continue to forgive our nation for all the failures and the wrong choices of our heritage and previous generations. We pray you forgive us particularly for our racism, anti-Semitism and the way in which we treated Israel over the years and reneged on promises, slavery, greed, And we pray, Lord, for our Queen and the Royal Family, for the Prime Minister and the Government, that they will make right choices and govern us as you desire. 
and that they will be given wisdom to rule aright. We praise you for those who we've been praying for who are sick. We praise you, Lord, for Jim Barrett in Scotland. We praise you for Dave, Lord, and we're believing for restoration for his kidneys and Alan, restoration for his knees and legs. We're praising you and, and believing for Rick, for Richard, for John in Mansfield and Worksop. And I pray for Mick, who's a friend of mine with his wife, Mary. Mick starting with a bit of dementia. And I pray, Lord, your healing touch, that you'll cut off the uh, dementia and the anger and the fear, and that you'll provide healing and peace and strength and blessing for them both. Pray for Mary, Lord, as she perseveres to serve and encourage and bless him. But pray, Lord, for your presence in that situation. Thank you for our friends over the road, Terry and Enid. And pray that you really help them to support one another and love one another. And that you will bless all of them together in Jesus' name. We pray for ourselves that you'll keep us repentant, that we will forgive quickly and say we're sorry quickly, and that you'll anoint us afresh with your blessed Holy Spirit, that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, all whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. And there are so many <clears throat> names and attributes of God. We will continue with a few more tomorrow. So until next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.